It is true. It is hard. Just like my... Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video for people who are trying to get into fantasy writing, sci-fi writing, whatever, and people who might just find this video interesting in of itself. Okay, but let's get right into the first thing on my notes on my phone, which is what makes it hard to write a fantasy novel, okay? And for me, at least, it's that not only do you have to pack in and consider and focus on what is in a normal fiction novel like character development, pacing, you know, dialogue, all these things. But then on top of that, you have to make a realistic-ish world, you have to make a unique world, and you have to make a deep lore. Add those three things on top and it becomes a hell, a hell of a lot to manage, all right? And for me, it was like kind of like CBT, like cock and bull torture, because I was like, I, I, I don't know what to focus on here, you know? Oh. And the advice that I would give on that is just focus on the world building first. You know, I'm not saying you have to have all of the world building down pat, because unless you spend like 10 years on it, I think there are certain things in terms of world building that can only come out through writing a story, whether it's a side story in your world or whether it's within the main story, there are certain things in the world building that can only come out through writing down the story, in my opinion. But, you know, get a notebook or just, you know, like notepad on uh, your computer and start writing down some key factors of the world, some key areas, uh, the politics of the world, you know, the kind of like military of the world, you know, the state of the world, all these things and what's causing the conflict in your story all that sort of very important stuff. And then after that, you can get down to writing, okay? How am I qualified to talk on this? Well, I'm certainly not the most qualified, that's for sure. But I have been doing this for about three years now. I went through two uh, attempts, which I then scrapped, and now I'm on my third, which I'm feeling really good about for the most part. And I'm sending, the, I've sent this to about 20 people of what I've got so far and I'm, you know, I've been getting feedback over the years to make it better and better. Not saying it's great, it could be trash, you know, I don't know, but at least for what these 20 people have said, it's good, it needs a lot of work, but there's, you know, there's something there. Anyway, so mistakes made that, that the mistake that I made, going down the rabbit hole too fast. Now that, what does that mean? For example, for your first idea for writing a fantasy novel, you might be so down with it that you just, you know, you start writing and you don't even realize that your idea kind of sucks, okay? Because for me, how this all started was in my last year of school in the English, in the English exam, you had to essentially write down a little creative writing piece. And mine was pretty much just Tolkien-esque drivel in that I just copied his stuff. Sure, my world had its own unique things, and they weren't hobbits, I guess, but besides their looks and a couple of little lore things, okay? You may as well have called the two main characters Frodo and Sam. So you really want to avoid that because I think, especially when a, a passion sparks in you, it's very easy to ignore all these pretty glaringly obvious mistakes to if other people read your work, okay? And I think that's something to be very, very conscious of that, hey, your first body of work is probably going to suck and it's probably extremely derivative. The same goes for your second. And do not be afraid to just be like, this doesn't have potential and just scrap it. But maybe keep some core ideas. That is what made you want to start writing in the first place, okay? For me, I actually come more from a movie, TV, gaming background. You know, that's where I like to consume my stories primarily. I'm mostly just writing a book because it's the easiest or sorry, the cheapest way to get my story on a page, okay? And to get all the lore out there. A screenplay wouldn't be in detail enough, if you ask me. And I loved reading as a kid, I just don't read novels so much now. I do listen to audiobooks. Anyway, we're getting off topic here, and I'm sorry for that. You know, you need to be willing to scrap your ideas and start from scratch again, but keep what you think you wanna keep that makes your story stand out from other things. Not necessarily better, but something that you know, grabs people's attention. It's like, oh, this is a little different. Obviously, nothing is wholly unique in this day and age. But another point that kind of connects to this point is that to make something sort of unique, I think you need to draw inspiration from things you like and then add your own little flair to it. For example, in my third iteration now, my story is just such a... Um, like culmination of inspiration from other media and then adding my own my own thing to it so like my inspirations come from naruto my inspirations come from red Dead redemption 2 my inspirations come from um lord of the rings star wars even avatar dragon ball z 
you know, all these things. Uh, Attack on Titan, so you've got six inspirations there. Now you take like aspects from that and you kind of mash them together and if you do it right and you take the right things, I don't even necessarily means I, I don't even necessarily means ideas in terms of world building and enemies and whatever from the thing. I just mean even thematically certain things you want to kind of emulate and then bend to be more your own thing. I think that's perfectly fine to do. And if you like there was a there was a famous writer. I don't know the famous writer. My friend told me this quote. OK, I'm sorry. But there was a famous writer who said, if you're inspired by something, feel free to copy it just as long as you add your own spin on it. And that's very much paraphrasing. But I don't think people need to feel guilty by kind of borrowing a little thing from another story. If overall your thing is your thing, if you're just completely copying, then yeah, that's bad. But to take a little inspiration is totally fine because everything takes inspiration. I mean, Tolkien, for example, is the granddaddy of fantasy. Uh, as we know him now, but even his stories, we like to act like he just made up everything, but even his stories, like Smog, for example, the dragon, where do you think he got that from? From mythology. Of, like, of course, right? So everything kind of comes from something, if, if you get what I'm saying, okay? And then when it comes to more mistakes made, it's once you've, let's say you've got your, your perfect idea, if you want to call it that, for your story. Don't hold on to a singular idea within that too strongly. Keep certain things that you want to keep, right? Blah, sorry, my phone's all blah. Keep certain things intact, but let your idea evolve, especially if the evolution makes the world more believable. Now, a specific example I have for that is, without getting into too much detail into my own thing, okay, there were two kind of objects, and they both played into what made the world have balance, okay? And when I really thought about it more and more, I was like, it kind of doesn't make sense that the second object also, you know, facilitates the balance of the world. But so the second object facilitated the balance of the world and was a weapon, okay, that uh, and it could only be a certain weapon because it connected to the first object. You can keep an idea, but don't ho hold on to it so strongly that you're not willing to change anything about that idea. As long as the thematics stay the same, as long as the, you know, the core of your story, the message you want to push across stays the same, then don't be afraid to change certain things around, all right? What I changed it to was the first thing keeps the balance of the world, the second thing connects to it, but the second thing isn't, um, it isn't needed for the balance of the world, but it is there for a certain power to be given, if that makes sense. And now we get to the third heading, which is don't be afraid to move slowly. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but Anyway, and that means in both respects of both pacing and how quickly or slowly you write your book. You go at your own pace, okay? Because for me, I was thinking, oh, you know, both, in both respects, that, oh, you know, it's page 50 and there hasn't been a proper battle yet. And, oh, you know, like I, I'm taking too long to write this thing, whatever. And then when I sent it to all these people, obviously in, in varying iterations because I've sent it at varying times of writing, right? But when I send it to these people, especially my most current iteration, it's been like, I really like that you're taking time to flesh out the world, to flesh out the characters before going into some big thing. And because I guess that slower approach, what it does if we're talking pacing, is it allows people to connect with your characters, it sets the stage of the world, it, you know, shows people the lore in a palatable and easy way because it's as the characters are kind of revealing it, right? And it's kind of giving this feeling of tension and hopelessness that you're kind of hoping will be broken out of in some way eventually, right? It allows people to sort of soak in your world at a breathable pace. And then when a battle finally does come around and you understand not only how the world works to a degree, obviously you're not going to reveal everything, right? But you understand how the world works to a degree and you understand the reasons for battle that makes the battle that much more impactful. Now, obviously this isn't a one size fits all thing, right? There are some great stories that start on the onset of just battle right there. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying that this was for me the case and I think it is a good rule in general. But if you understand the rule and you have a good reason to break the rule, then you break the rule. It's a lot like video making or filmmaking, right? It's like too much headroom on a video is weird, just like too little headroom on a video is weird. 
But if you have a specific reason to break that rule, like let's say to make a scene feel awkward or to make a scene feel really tense, then you break that conventional rule, right? If you get what I'm saying, okay? And the other thing with moving slowly when it comes to actually writing is then it means you pick up on a lot more and you pick up on a lot more plot holes. I mean, for me, when I wrote those first 50 pages, okay, it was like, holy crap, I thought everything was down pat in the first 50 pages. I thought I was all epic and stuff, you know, and then you reread it a couple times and you're like, that's a plot hole, that's a plot hole, that's a plot hole, that's a plot hole, that could use better writing, ah, da 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 dee 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 that could use some fleshing out, what da 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 this character's kind of shallow, ooh dee 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 you know what I'm saying, ooh, that kind of doesn't make sense, mm, yeah, that sort of thing. Whatever your first 50 pages are gonna look like, you want your first 50 pages, first 100 pages to be so incredibly solid, because not only does it then kind of set the standard for the rest of your novel. The world relies on that first 50 pages and the rest of your books rely on that first 50 pages and your story rely on that first 50 pages. If what comes after those first 50 pages does not fall in line with what was in those first 50 pages, then the reader's gonna pick up on it and be like, you've just changed the rules midway without really explaining and it doesn't make sense. Like, this feels a little bit rushed. You didn't think this through enough. Whereas, if you really spend a lot of time on the first 50 pages, you know, to get the characters right, to get the world building right, to get the pacing right, to get the plot right, and to plant seeds for foreshadowing for later on, then when the reader gets there, they're like... That was so well done, you know? And I'm not saying I'm anywhere near there. I'm not trying to compare myself to authors or whatever that are like really good. But I looked at George R. R. Martin, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, and I opened the book just at a random page, at like page 90. And I was like, holy shit, it's page 90. Uh, uh, and there hasn't even been a major battle because I, I read and I, I knew where it was in the story. And it's like, just as long as you're doing things right, or, 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 you know, just as long as you're doing things in a well enough way, in a grabbing way, it doesn't mean there has to be action, it doesn't mean you want to take your time, you want to make things work well, and you really, really want to spend a lot of time on the opening of your book because you want it to be compelling and you want it to make sense. And then, this is another thing, okay, my prologue in my book, which was uh, originally, I think about 10 pages, maybe 5 pages, I don't know, anyway, uh, my prologue, I set the stage of the world to a degree, at least one part of the world, okay? And I thought, I've done a good job here. You know what I mean? But what I realized is I made the sort of things go down too quickly, like the, the downfall of a certain thing happened too quickly, and there was no establishment of characters of the prologue. At least that's what I was told. And I was like, you know, I wanted to leave a bit of mystery, but I can still do that by fleshing out more. And then what I did was give what people might think would be the protagonist a little bit more screen time, if you want to call it that, and also a little more screen time of his father and stuff like that. And so then all it took, it wasn't even that much, all it took was an extra six pages of fleshing out of the prologue, and then people read it again. That's so much better, you know? If you think you're going to slow whatever, just think, would the reader appreciate this? And if this is going too fast, would the reader be like, I want to know why and, the, you know, that sort of thing. Why and how? Yeah, okay. With this video, I feel like there's going to be something I forget to say. But now we're on the last heading, which is tropes. Ooh, tropes. Um, and the first thing to say about tropes for me is it's easy to fall into tropes. And you should never ever, ever, ever do it mindlessly. Now that sounds like a no-brainer, right? But I think, especially when you're really excited about an idea, it's very easy to just fall into that because you're kind of going on what you know. So it's like a fantasy book. It's like, oh, the, the magical weapon has to be the sword because that's what it usually is, right? And it's like, that's what I fell into. But then I changed the weapon to be a quarterstaff because it's actually what makes a hell of a lot more sense. And if you deal with it, in the same reverence that people deal with a fantasy sword, you can give it the exact same amount of kind of weight, you know, the exact same amount of cool factor, if you get what I'm saying. And 
I also think that just, you know, you can use a sword too. If that's what works for your story, that's what works for your story. That's what comes first, you know. Don't do tropes mindlessly, but don't just go away from tropes just to go away from them. Don't be a Ryan Johnson, you know what I mean? Um, and if you like The Last Jedi, okay, cool. If you like Ryan Johnson, cool. I don't. That's why I'm using him as an example. But, you know, don't just subvert expectations or subvert expectations. While you shouldn't go into tropes mindlessly, you also should really, really, really not just go away from tropes just to go away from tropes. If a sword makes sense for you, then good. If a quarter staff makes sense for you, then good. If a twig makes sense for you, then good. Just as long as it makes sense. In fact, what I've written down right here is when it comes to steering away from tropes, a clear reason is needed. The same can be said for tropes as well, but I feel like people don't think about the second one as much because especially in today's day and age, I think it's become so popular to just do the opposite of the trope just to just because you think you're being different, but then you're actually not because it's, what's ev it's what everyone's doing right now. So yeah, I think you really need a clear reason. Um, and you know, then at that point, things will feel natural because I, at least a little bit natural, you're always gonna have doubts and you're always gonna be like, oh, is this okay, whatever, but you know, at, at the point where you're making decisions for your story and not for the expectations of what you think people might want or might like or, you know, what's going on in society right now and, you know, kind of like what the uh, climate of, of novels is right now, when you kind of, this is just my opinion, this could be totally wrong, but when you strip that away and you just focus on the thematics of your story, when you focus on what works for your story, that's when you're gonna get something unique, I think. When you're not following the beaten path, well, when you're following the beaten path when it makes sense, when, it ne when you need to, right? But when you're not following it, when it also makes sense. Just be true, I think, to your story and what you're doing and also take criticism properly. You, if, and by that I mean, don't get defensive. Now, there's certain things that you should definitely be like, nope, my book is this way. It needs to, this thing needs to stay this way. There are certain things you have to plant your feet in the ground and be like, no, because some people just prefer certain things and other people prefer certain things. So if you send the same thing to say five people, they all read it and some say, I like that. Some say, I didn't, then you can keep it. And on the other token, if you send it to say five people and four out of five or three out of five said, I did not like that and they give a good reason why about why it doesn't really work or why it doesn't make sense or why this would be better, then I think you can change it unless you feel very, very strongly for a very, very good reason that you're not going to change it. But oftentimes I think a middle ground is a good thing when you're kind of changing things in your story. Anyway, that's about everything I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed, and I know this was very different from my usual style of video, but I don't know if you've noticed if you watch me in general, uh, recently, I've tried just a new philosophy on my channel of I'm just going to upload whatever the hell I want to upload, whether that's a meme edit, whether that's this, whether that's the thing I did on, you know, uh, the trailers or whatever, anything, anything that I want to do, that's what I'm going to do, okay? So, thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.